Welcome to Slaying XL Dragons video number five. These are the videos that accompany this book. We're in chapter three right now. We're going to talk about the Excel table feature, pages 43 to 47. We will cover these aspects of the Excel table feature. Let's go over to our Excel workbook. The Excel is fun start workbook. You can download it from the link directly below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet called tables. We actually used this in our last video to learn how to sort. I, add, I typed in some data here. Now I want to change the column width, so I'm going to click and drag. Remember what we said, if we're going to put anything next to a table, in order for the uh, table features like sort and pivot table, etc. to work, you got to leave a blank column. So I just type my data here uh, and add a little formatting. Now in this video we want to see the Excel table feature. And what it will do is if you have your data field names in the first row and records in rows and then no blanks, you can convert it to an Excel table and you get things like dynamic ranges, automatic sort and filter, automatic um, formatting, and even some formula advantage, something called table formula nomenclature. Now we're going to see all that, but the first thing is, how do we convert this to a table? We simply uh, go up to insert and table. Now I'm never going to use this a ribbon method because Control T is the keyboard shortcut that will allow us to do this. Control T, and then it says, "Hey, is that where the data is? My table has headers. Sometimes, if you do not have the field names formatted, uh, this may not come checked, but you want to check it. All right, click OK. Just like that. No, look at that. It added some banded formatting. It added drop downs." with not only sort, but some filtering options that we'll see, we'll learn about later in uh, the data analysis chapter. Okay, so that makes it an official Excel table. Now, why would we do this? Well, dynamic ranges. In essence, Excel, Microsoft added this feature so it's kind of like a real live database. Now notice our records go down to this last one here, but what if we add new records to the bottom? In a real database, a database is where you store, store raw data, in a real database, as soon as you add a new records, any formulas, charts, or reports, or whatever, automatically update. And that's what this table feature will do. So I want to prove that to you. We're going to build a formula up here, and then we're going to come down and add a record, and we'll see that it updates. I'm going to double click between H and I, double click between I and J, just to fit this. All right, um, now I'm going to come here. Maybe I have to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hold Control and roll the wheel on my mouse. All right, now we're going to actually have to type this out, the entire thing. So I'm going to do my sum ifs, just as we did in the last couple of videos. Notice I see this down here. Now I could keep typing and hit Tab, but if I'm not sure, another way to select from this function dropdown is simply to double click. Bloop, and it puts it in. Now we saw how to do this in uh, earlier video, the sum range. Now usually we highlight, I'm not going to highlight here because I want to save that highlighting trick for our next immediate example. I, I want to type these in to show you a particularly cool aspect of table feature. Now sum range, these are what we want to add. So I have to think E2, so I'm going to type E2, and notice you don't have to type a capital E, it will little or capital will work, colon, and then the last one is E17. All right, now comma. Comma gets me to the next argument, which is bold criteria range. Well, the names, here's our criteria, are is B2 to B17, so I'm going to type B2, B17, comma, and now I get to my criteria. Now, I'm immediately going to hit my left arrow, arrow, arrow to get my criteria Tina. All right, now close parentheses. Now, watch this, two things. When we enter this, I'm going to use Control Enter and keep the cell selected. Notice up here, we could see the letters became capital, and if I hit F2, we can see, sure enough, E2 to E17. Now, table feature, if we add a new record, this better change to E18 and B18. I'm going to click Escape. 
Let's see how to add a new record. Now we're going to add a record here, and to do that there's a few ways you can do it. I like to click in the last cell, very last, diagonally furthest one away, and hit tab. Now I'm going to type 1 slash 8 slash 2010 tab, because I'm entering data and I need my cursor to go to the right. I'm going to type Tina. Now look at this. This is called autocomplete. This is not unique to the table feature, but in Excel, if you have this feature turned on, it looks up. As soon as you type a T, it looks for all the T data. If it sees a unique T item, which it does here, it auto fills it in. This is called autocomplete. Now in this example, we only have one word that starts with T, so we don't get into trouble. I'll show you another example where you get into trouble. So, point number one about autocomplete, totally awesome. It lets you absolutely type a T and then simply type tab and it will accept the INA. Now I'm going to type boom. Wait a second, I thought we had autocomplete. Why doesn't this work? Well, because I, it looks up in the column and finds lots of boom and it doesn't know which one to fill in. So I'm going to type a space and then one tab. I'm going to type 12 tab and I'm going to type 120. Now instead of hitting tab I'm going to hit enter because I don't want to add a new record. I just want it to go down. Enter. Now here's the big moment. Let's click here and hit F2. That is awesome. It turned from E17 to E18 and B17 to B18. That's not possible unless you invoke the table feature. Totally awesome. I'm going to click Escape. Now, I want to click in the table, and no way, there's a context-sensitive table tools ribbon. I'm going to click on Design. Table 2 is the name. I actually would like to rename this. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click and I'm going to type uh, something smart. When you're naming, you always name it something that makes sense, logical sense, so you can figure out what it is. Boom. And how about sales? Because that's what this is. Um, we're selling boomerangs, right? So boom sales. And I'm going to hit enter. So I typed it, clicked in there, typed it, and hit enter. Now that table is officially boom names. Now we'll use that in a formula over here. Actually, before I do that, uh, now. We did autocomplete. Um, actually, we'll do a formula, and I'll come back and do that, and I'll show you trouble with autocomplete. This time, instead of, I'm going to click here in F2, typing out the cell references, I'm just going to highlight. So I'm going to type equals sum, and as soon as I um, type an S, I can hit tab, and it puts the, the parentheses in. Sum range. Now, much easier usually to just go like this. <gasps> What's that? Look at that. That's called table formula nomenclature. It has the name of the table, remember we named it, and in square brackets it has the field name. Totally amazing. Now some people don't like this, uh, but I'll show you a good use for it um, if you're typing your formula, formulas in just a moment. And some people do like it. It makes sense. They can look at the formula and they know there's the table and there's the field. Now if you know Access at all, Access is a Microsoft database, they use square brackets for field names and formulas. All right, that's the sum range, comma, criteria range. I'm going to go and I bet you anything it's going to come up. Yes, yeah, sure enough. Boom sales and in square brackets, sales rep, comma, and then I'm going to hit my arrow, arrow to get my cell reference H2. Close parentheses. Control Enter. Now you can see the formula up there. Um, now let's come down and add a record. Now here's another way to add a record. If you come down here, you can actually just start typing and it will know as long as it's directly below. I'm going to type 1 slash 9 slash 2010 tab. Look at that, it already expanded right there. Now we got to see trouble with autocomplete. So far we have Donita, Donita. Now I'm going to pretend like I am not paying attention. I know Don works for us, a guy named Don, different than Donita. So I'm just going to type D-O-N. Now notice by default it goes up and it grabs it. It sees a D-O-N up there so it's grabbing it. And if I hit tab here, which I usually do blindly when I'm typing, it doesn't delete the highlighted I-T-A. Now let me do that again. D-O-N, that little, when I hit tab, you know, I would think that they would get rid of it, but no. 
it doesn't do that. So you actually, if you're not paying attention, you can re um, register the sale for Donita even though Don made it. So that's trouble with auto uh, complete. Now I'm going to type D-O-N and then delete tab. Now, from now on, when we type D-O-N, it will not happen because it sees two of them, just like we saw with the boom. But the first time you do it, you got to be aware. All right, so Don sold boom 10, comma, sold one of them, and it was 29 bucks. And then I'm at the end of the table, and I don't want to hit tab. I want to hit enter, so I don't add a new record. Now let's go up here, click here, and F2. Beautiful E19. Uh, not only that, but if I hit F2 right here, that doesn't show that it updates, but you can see just by the blue outline that sure enough, it's updating perfectly. All right, now finally, let's see another way. Here we highlight it, but let's just do this a slightly different way. I'm going to do some ifs. Some ifs. T arrow, 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 tab. Some range now. The beauty of this method we're going to have to do is we're going to type it out. If I'm not on the same sheet, I can just, I'm somewhere else in this workbook or on this worksheet because people don't like to highlight. They like to, you know, use their keys. You could just type B-O and no way. Now a table name is there. That's a different icon. So, so far we've seen, if I back up, we see an icon for functions when I type an O. There's no BO function, so now there's an icon for table. Later we'll see other icons like for define names. I'm going to hit tab. Is that cool or what? Now, square brackets is the syntax we use for field names in this table format structure using table formula nomenclature. So I'm just going to type a square bracket square bracket, and it automatically knows. It brings up a list of all of your field names. Now, you can do the same thing. You can either uh, type an S or you can double click. I'm going to type an S and then tab. Now, notice it's all black, which means the formula doesn't recognize it as a reference, but when I type a close square bracket, boom, it turns blue and it recognizes it. Now, ready? Comma, criteria range, well, it's B O tab and then square bracket, and then I'm going to arrow for this time. I'm going to say, uh, oh, I did this one wrong. No problem. I'm going to type an S, tab, and then close square bracket. Now, this one should have been sales, total sales. So I'm going to come back here and uh, type. Notice I've highlighted it. I don't have to hit delete. I can just type a T. And sure enough, there it is, tab, and then be sure and type that square bracket. I can see that it's uh, black, which means it doesn't recognize it. But when I type a closed square bracket, boom. All right, so I'm down here, comma, and then arrow, arrow, arrow. Now, wait a second. What's happening? I use my arrow key, and it's not getting me a cell reference. Well, look down here. It says edit. That's because I was in the middle of clicking and editing my formula. Down here, we see edit before we saw point and enter. So I have to click here and this edit actually has to show up as either enter or point. Now I'm going to hit the F2 key to get it back to enter and now I can use my arrow keys. Now a lot of times in that case when you mess up, you know, let me do this and mess up. So I'm clicking around and I click right here. You know, I hit the arrow key and then I go, oh man, I messed up. So I usually just then go like that. But the F2 key will toggle between your point. If you hit the F2, I'll do it right now. Point, which means you're in the middle of getting a cell reference. I'm going to hit F2. Edit, which means now the arrow keys move through the formula. And Enter, that means you can either hit Enter or use your arrow keys to hunt for a cell reference. Now I'm going to close parentheses. That's my criterion. I'm going to hit Enter. Now. Um, so, two last things about our table feature. One is some people don't like this. They want to be able to highlight the column and never see this table formula nomenclature. So let me see, show you where how to turn this off. Now, File Menu and Options, and then over here, Formulas, 
And right here, you can uncheck this. I'm not going to uncheck it. And anyway, then it doesn't. Oh, well, maybe I will uncheck it just for a moment. Click OK. Now I'm going to come over here and just type in equals and highlight this column. And you can see, look, it's not showing that table form and formula nomenclature. Now I'm going to go back up here. Actually, we could use the Alt keys. Alt, notice it's F, and then T for options. Go down to Formulas. I'm going to turn this back on. Click OK. Now if I go equals this, now it shows up. All right, and now final, finally one thing that this will kind of be a segue to our next video. I don't really like the format here. Um, I would like to show it as a, as a currency format. Now notice when we typed it, we just did things like typed 120 right here or 336 right here. Well, we can easily change this with something called number formatting. I'm going to click and highlight the whole column. Notice we could use our keyboard shortcut we learned in video 2. Control Shift Down Arrow highlights that whole column. And now I'm going to go to Format Cells. Now here's the Home uh, Ribbon tab. And over here there are some number format. Anytime we're going to format numbers, we want to use number format. We click, could click this drop down and go to Currency or Accounting. But throughout the rest of the book, since we're going to do number formatting so often. I'm going to teach you the keyboard shortcut right now. Format cells dialog box is Control-1. And it opens up. Number, I'm going to go down and click Currency. This is much better than the ribbon because you have uh, all the options available to you here. Notice you can say what, how many decimals, what kind of symbol, wow, Chinese, English, etc. Or, or how to display your negatives. Now I'm going to click OK. And sure enough, now look at this. I'm going to click in this cell, dollar sign $336.00. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters displaying on the surface of the spreadsheet. But look what's actually in the cell, just three characters. That's number formatting. That's our first exposure to the fact that what you see on the surface of the spreadsheet is sometimes much different than actually what sits in the cell. In our next uh, couple of videos, we'll talk specifically actually our next four videos about number formatting. In this video we just saw the table feature and some of the advantages like dynamic range and table formula nomenclature. And also the fact that it's like a database you can add new records. Alright, uh, now time to do some more homework. Of course if you click on the link below the video you can download this workbook slaying Excel Dragons homework 1 to 9. Whether you're uh, using this book or the videos in a class and doing homework assigned or you just want to practice, here it is. Chapter 3 pages 40 to 57. There's homework 9. There's an answer to homework 9. 10. Answer and 11 and an answer. Alright, we'll see you next video.